Fantastic. There's the last one there. And now what are you going to do? Get my shoe. Yeah. Well, cover them over nicely. I think that was a bit too much. Good patting down. You said that two times now. I know. Well, that's very good. Where's the other one? Well, we, we'll get some other children if there are any. See if they can plant some. Got, still got one to cover up. There. Very good, Maggie. And the other one, the oh, same. Maggie just, just planted. What well, she planted? That's a, right. A crocus. crocus. Maggie just planted a crocus. Hooray! Hooray! Hooray. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Next, we'll do you next, yeah. Do you want to put some of that on top of it? Yeah. When that cooker comes up, you'll be that much bigger. <laughs> and then we'll do another lot. There you are, Maggie. You put that lot on top. Oh, look. And do you, now, do you want to give it a good pat down? That's the best bit, patting it down. Patting it down. Well done, Maggie Moo. You okay. okay. pat it down and, and then up it grows. And now your sister, what's your name? Oh, come here. Lexi. Cheese. Cheese. Lexi. Lexi. So, Paul, we're here in Darlington with the Insectopolis City of Insects show. Uh, what was your inspiration for this show? Insect depletion probably was the inspiration for this show. But I, I found myself in a convenient situation already having some insects in my repertoire and already being 
as it were, loving insects ever since uh, being a small child. So um, that, met, I think, put me in a position thinking to myself, what c can I do uh, to make my contribution towards helping us out of the uh, environmental crisis? Now, if everyone does their best, I think we, we've got a fairly good chance. And a lot of people, different people have different skills. So I was in a position of running a street theatre company, and so I thought, well, I'll work on this, this issue of insect depletion and try and get rid of, um, I think it's called insectophobia, which is basically, or at least underrating insects, either regarding them as obnoxious or trivial. Um, yeah, I wanted to get people to think that they were wonderful and, and to appreciate what they do for us, which is basically keep us alive on this planet, which is a fairly important thing, isn't it? You know? Yeah, because insects are beautiful and the costumes are wonderful as well. Uh, gorgeous, in fact. Um, so it's a show with a message. Yes, it certainly has got yeah, it certainly has got a message, and the message is, if you like, um, and the word insectopolis kind of gives it away, is the message is that cities have a big part to play in the regeneration of our insect populations, which have been so challenged. The, um, this has been shown in a lovely bit of research by Nick Chu. Uh, a postgraduate student down in um, Bristol University who's just becoming a doctor, I'm sure he will, but he's also becoming a celebrity for this bit of research that he's just done, um, which shows, co makes comparisons between allotments, gardens and the countryside. And you can see on maps how cities are amazing places for insects because the gardens are quite close to each other, they're not too far, so that they have, they're, in other words, they're not suffering from what's widely understood by ecologists to be a very bad thing, which is habitat fragmentation. In other words, they can get from one to another. Um, there's been something, a lot talked recently about bee lines. Now, you may think of a bee line as just being a straight line, because that's the normal, but it, it does actually, there are bee lines now right around the UK. And some of our cities are placed on those bee lines, and they actually help the bees through the line. So they're like big buzz stops, if you like. I use the expression buzz stops now because they're also becoming very popular, which is wonderful, which is where a bus stop has something planted on its roof so that all the bees can actually live on the roof of an ordinary bus stop, which is now called a, a buzz stop. All this kind of thing is marvellous. So we're, t we're coming here to build on strength, it's not to start it. something from nothing. We're not to start from, from, from nothing. We're saying, look, we've got a very strong proposition here for our survival, i.e., you know, uh, the gardens and the backyards and the, win and the window boxes, they're doing a great job, but let's get really get it right and make sure we don't use any for, you know, pesticides or, or poisonous fertilizers, make sure we plant seasonal offerings for our insects that help them through the difficult periods, which is the spring and the winter, and all this kind of thing. Make sure we turn off the lights at night and all that kind of thing to really work on and improve what we've already got going. So you, you and Maisie, you're quite keen gardeners at home, at Summerhill. Ha! That's a joke to call me a keen gardener, but Maisie's a keen gardener. I tend to just sort of build things and, uh, and study it, and Maisie actually does it. She's a real doer. Great, and she's planting plants here today in Darlington as part of the show. Thanks for that question. Yes, she certainly is. She's going to be trying to get some... We, we, we've planted already some up there, and. Uh, talked a lot about different plants to people in particular leopard lungworts our absolute favorite star plant sometimes known as pulmonaria which is a little plant that helps the bees a lot in 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 the darkness of winter when there's not enough food for them yeah and the butterflies love a buddleia um, the butterflies love a buddleia very yeah, true buddleia. Uh, um, but let me just make a comment on that and that is that the, 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 uh, the Red Admiral, which you were performing a few minutes ago, yeah. Alec. Thank you, Mr. Interviewer. Uh, yeah, the, the also um, might even love stinging nettles even more because that's where the babies live. That's where they plant their eggs and that's where their little caterpillars live. So what can people do at home in their green spaces, in their gardens? That's good. Uh, that's a good question. Um, it's a question of what they can do and what they perhaps shouldn't do. What they can do, which is special, is leave a little bit of the garden go wild. Not, not a big, that needn't be a huge amount, but we, we would like to see a few stinging nettles and a bit of long grass because this provides kind of habitat opportunities. And uh, what happens is that 
mice make little houses and uh, in, 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 in the long grass and then they desert it and then a, a year later a bee will, will live in the same in place where the mouse was. Paul, what can people do in their gardens and green spaces at home to help insect populations? Thank you, very good question. So basically they can plant flowers as well as vegetables because a lot of the insects need support during periods of time when you're eating crops and so forth are not flowering and they're not getting enough nectar. So in the early winter, it'd be very good to plant some of that pulmonary I was talking about before to let the daisies um, grow, let the um, uh, dandelions. dandelions. So I had a bit of a blank spot there. <laughs> yeah, make sure you don't harvest the dandelions before they go turn to seed. I, obviously, one totally understands picking them before yeah, they yeah. actually spread all their seeds all over the garden. Grow that lawn out. That's a couple of things, you see. No uh, more. That's right. So it's been called scruffination, uh, which is quite difficult for a lot of people who are heavily emotionally invested in very tidy spaces. But you've just got to be a bit lazy, guys, and leave a little bit of it go wild for the insects. Another thing that's very important is not to um, put those little um, solar powered twinkly LED lights in the garden and have them shining all night long when you're not even there because that can very adversely affect insects in very many numbers of different ways and can destroy insect populations. They actually use LED lights now as a form of um, anti um, insect, as a form of insecticide you might say in some farming techniques so we've got to be very careful to get our lights off if we do have a garden light while we are there we must make sure it's a warm colored light not a blue or a green and uh, and and directional so it's not shining all over the place um, so that's just if we do need lights there are plenty of other things about the garden that you've you've hinted at to me just now like uh, pesticide we obviously that you don't need any pesticide in towns at all and in fact there's a great Dave Goulson uh, online uh, uh, petition to ban pesticides from towns completely and we very much hope that will happen but what is very important in, in relation to pesticides is the fact that lawn cares and selective herbicides and fertilizers quite often have a sneaky amount of pesticide in them you know it's mixed in with it so to spot the pesticide it's no good just looking for a label which says pesticide you've really got to know a little bit about the ingredients uh, and look very carefully at, your, at your, any products you put on your on your lawn and make sure they're organic and good <laughs> i've got to write to my mp about pesticides in cities yeah do yeah and uh, and, and sign dave goulson's petition to dave ban goulson, them right. yeah find it online perfect <laughs> thank you so sarah what what have you been doing today Today I've been part of the butterfly collection, so we've been giant butterflies walking around the city centre of Darlington, attracting a lot of attention to ourselves in the hope that we can raise awareness to the humans of some of the problems, like the wider problems of the planet and the ecosystem. And you know, we would hope that humans can find a way that they actually find their place in the ecosystem rather than being this species that is self-destroying the planet itself and therefore uh, jeopardizing the world which we live in and which our children will live in and in the next hundred years. Um, what attracted you to uh, our group to become a participant since you've been this a few months now? Yeah. Yeah, well I've been I've been training circus skills. Um, uh, so stilts seemed a, a natural progression um, and I'm also studying uh, land and wildlife management at East College Durham um, so the the concept of the show being a, um, an ecological uh, issue and, and, and promoting that to the public um, uh, was, was was great interest yeah that's great and um could you um, tell me, have you learned anything specific related to your uh, understanding of um, insects while you've been working on this? Uh, sure, yeah, I've, um, <laughs> I've definitely uh, improved my job.
general knowledge of uh, which uh, <laughs> my butterfly ID is improved for sure. Yeah, uh, I can tell a red admiral from from a tortoise shell, uh, and a um, purple emperor from a swallowtail. Uh, and I know which one likes the nettles and which one likes the buddleia and uh, what foods they prefer for sure. Um, which will all help me in my practice as a uh, as a conservationist. Uh, should I get there after my uh, my studies? Um, in terms of um, creating new habitat, which uh, is something that I'm, I'm interested in and in learning about. Yeah. Yeah. So the show is an educational show. Um, its uh, aim is to bridge that gap between the science and uh, the public and uh, communicate the, um, the the science of uh, insect uh, population depletion uh, to the public and the impending ecological disaster that we're all rushing towards um, and just what we can do about it um, whether that is uh, in our own um, small way caring for a garden or, or let, allowing it to go wild in places because we were suffering from um, a lot of habitat loss here in the UK and around the world. Um, so creating those new habitats uh, would be would be great <laughs> if you could do that in your own small way or if you can petition your MP or, or um, join a uh, an ecological charity like uh, Bug, Life. Bug Life is a great one. Plant Life also a wonderful charity. Um, yeah, so the show is is fun. It's entertaining, but it's also educational. <laughs>